again, the Game Master? Yeah, this was one of those cartoons we wondered why the heck we watched, because deep down we hated it for how badly it butchered the video games it was based on. But it was obviously popular enough for NBC to keep it on Saturday mornings for three years, and it also inspired a cheap knockoff. Oh yes, there was actually an even cheaper, goofier knockoff of Captain N that ran in afternoon syndication in 1990. Prepare yourselves for the horror of the Power Team. Okay, the actual title of the full show was Video Power, and it was actually split between live action and animation. Kind of like if they combined Captain N with the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. With absolutely none of whatever charm possibly existed on either of those other shows. So each episode started on a live-action set that just screams 80s crossing over to the 90s. I mean, I get psychedelic nightmares of the Saved by the Bell opener just looking at this. So naturally, our esteemed host for this show would be some god-awful Zach Morris ripoff. Video power is all about video games. This is the only show that's going to give you everything you could possibly ever want to know about the whole world of video games. This is Johnny Arcade, who's like a 90s alternate universe version of the angry video game nerd. I mean, not only does he dress in these horribly dated radical outfits, but the games he reviews in each episode are almost always given positive reviews. Tracy, the game for the NES. Looks real cool. No, I'm not putting down the gameplay. The game's fun. It keeps you on your toes and it's really challenging. Look, you guys all know that if I ever see something good in a TV show, I'll tell you such. But if you're a game critic and you give this a positive review, I think you've lost all credibility. In every corner lurks peril and death, not to mention loads of great graphics. Do not expect an easy quest. But if you want to pursue a very challenging victory, go forward, my friend, and enter the dragon's lair. I'm gonna assume most of you paused this video so you could run to the bathroom and throw up. In addition to reviewing games, Johnny also provided game hints and cheats back in an era when you couldn't just look it all up online. Our first tip is from Game Players Magazine for Ninja Gaiden 2. In Stage 5-2, go for the one-up behind the lower globe. Wait until his enemy gets as far away as possible. Yeah, you kids don't know how lucky you have it. In our day, we had to get game help from magazines, hotlines that were always busy, and douchebags like this. So in between these mostly useless live action scenes, we get the animated segment, The Power Team, which is basically Captain N in reverse, in that instead of someone from our world going into the video game world, a whole bunch of video game characters seem to come through Johnny Arcade's TV set into our world. How does it happen? Do I even need to tell you it's never truly explained? Yeah, at least Captain N gave us an actual pilot to explain how and why Kevin was brought to video land. Now I should point out that while I did see the show in its original run, I didn't see all 55 episodes and could only obtain about 30 of them for this review. So I apologize in advance if anything I say could be countered by an episode I couldn't watch. This cartoon's cast was pretty limited because it only included characters from games that were published by Acclaim. So our characters are Quirk, Tyrone from Arch Rivals, Kuros from Iron Sword, Max Force from Narc, and Bigfoot. But of course it could be worse. They could have used the LJN published games. Their primary mission is to protect our world from Mr. Big, Max Force's arch nemesis, who not only also got out of his video game, but somehow got a hold of all the game cartridges that everyone came out of. 
And by the way, since I never played NARC, I never knew where Mr. Big came from until I researched the show for this review. Because where he came from is never really stated in the show. Because that's how you draw in viewers to your show and the games you're shilling. Give them almost no backstory into the characters whatsoever. It appears that Max Force is the de facto leader of this group, while Tyrone is a show-off and Kuros is a braggart on the likes of Simon Belmont. This reminds me a great deal of the water level back in my Iron Sword game world. Oh man! Here he goes again! Well, it does, Tyrone. Meanwhile, Quirk is a hothead who has a real issue with how you pronounce the word tomato. I'm gonna find that little tomato Quirk. Hey, 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 hey! It's tomatoes, you jerk! Tomatoes! 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 Wow, and I thought I was annoyed with how people always put acronyms in their Facebook posts. Johnny, meanwhile, I guess functions like Zordon, as he spends much of his time in his room talking to the team through his TV set or his computer and controlling Bigfoot through his NES advantage. That is some pretty darn good online access for 1990. The fact that Mr. Big has the game packs is crucial because they have the ability to zap the characters back into the games, which Big is out to do so he can then wreak havoc on our world all to himself. I've been waiting a long time to punch that little tomato's game over button. And just what type of evil, nefarious schemes of Mr. Big are they out to thwart? Nine shipments of tomatoes have been hijacked in the past week. Without tomatoes, there's no tomato sauce. And without tomato sauce, there's no pizza. The pizzeria owners will have to deal with us if they want tomato sauce. And we'll charge them ten times what they're worth. That was the plot of the first episode. You know, when you make Koopa look downright sinister by comparison, that's really bad. Basically, Big is little more than a third-rate gangster who steals money from charity organizations and tries to stir up violence among street gangs. Oh, and he also has a non-stop barrage of video game-related puns. One move and my grenade launcher zaps Bigfoot to that big warp zone in the sky. You better be stocked up on bonus lives, fella! Congratulations! You make my comedy look like Robin Williams by comparison! Doesn't help his cause that his two stooges are basically human equivalents of King Hippo and the Eggplant Wizard. I found it, Buzz! <laughs> it rolled up here! No! Get rid of... <laughs> Why me? He does occasionally recruit some of the other hero's foes, like Quirk's nemesis Roddy Radish and the wizard Malkill from Iron Sword. Heck, Malkill appears in a few episodes and proves to be a much better antagonist for this show, mainly by showing off his ability to summon the four elementals. There was even an episode that returned them to Kuros' game world, where they load up on lots of references to the game itself. Most important are the keys. They will allow us to open treasure chests. Eat this, it will give you strength. Yeah! I do feel stronger! Sadly, it appears the only other game world we actually get to see is Quirks, which for those who don't know, is basically a puzzle game. I don't get it. There's just that little block on the other side. The only thing that'll move it is a block. forward to seeing some sort of intense combative basketball universe that Tyrone came from. 
As other reviewers have suggested in similar media, this whole issue of video game characters coming into our world just raises so many questions. For example, do these guys' presence in our world mean they're no longer in anyone's video games? Alright, Malkill, prepare to die! Huh? Where's Kuros? What kind of crazy glitch is this? summon multiple versions of themselves from anyone's game packs? Or are these radioactive versions that cause the characters to come out? Is Johnny Arcade's home near a toxic waste dump or something? More and more questions that could have been easily answered with an actual pilot to the series. Let's face it, I'm probably asking way too much for these creators to come up with these answers because just like Captain N, they screw up the game characters. Most notorious? Why does Kuros look like Thundar the Barbarian? He was a traditional knight in shining armor in the games. Also, from what I've read, Max Force did not look like a SWAT team soldier with a ripoff of Batman's belt. And also, there's the little matter of Quirk being a Game Boy game, and yet having a full-size game pack here. Isn't it nice that the writers took all of five minutes to research these games? Or worse, just flat out didn't care? They also seem to have powers that I don't think were in the games. Kuros's sword acts like Lynx, Quark can apparently fly when the plot demands it, and Tyrone can use a basketball as a freaking deadly projectile. Yeah, but let's see him beat Jordan and Bird in a game of horse! All joking aside, the Power Team cartoons were really the only reason anyone tuned into this show, I'm sure. Which is why for the second season, yeah, it actually got a second year. Video Power removed the cartoons altogether and turned itself into some kind of game show. Like a cross between Double Dare and that game competition in The Wizard. With Johnny Arcade hosting with none of Mark Summers' charisma. But now it is narrowed down to Mark and Martin, the two contestants for Mega Man Week. Okay, guys, here we go. Video Warriors on your mark. Get set. But Trying too hard! I actually don't mind that I could barely find any of those episodes, and I don't think I have to explain that there wasn't another season. This show was one big colossal game over! The cartoon series suffers from the same problems that its inspiration did, getting too much wrong from the games it was based on for its fan base to enjoy what could have been just a goofy, entertaining show. What doesn't help is that they were sandwiched in between live action pieces featuring a completely annoying poser of a game expert who tries to be all with it, and any time you try that hard to be hip, it ain't hip. Heck, I don't know if I've seen more annoying live-action bits on a video game cartoon in my life! Mario. 